one of the first mechanisms that you will come across. So one mechanisms where we needed to apply the basics that we've learned about mechanisms. So understanding the type of reaction and uh, um, understanding the, um, the really the term of electrophile nucleophile is uh, the one that is involved in alkene. I'm not going to say the name yet because we will work it out together. So um, I will write uh, over an overall equation. So let's say, let's go simple. Let's say we have a C2H4 reacting with uh, HBr. This will form C2H5Br. Okay, we could think about, okay, what type of mechanism is this? Mm -hmm. We clearly see that we have two reactants, only one product. This means that something has been bonded together, so has been added. In fact, this would be an addition. It would be an addition reaction. Let's have a look at the mechanism, how that works. So um, displayed formula are useful to start with. Then uh, when you want to really get confident with uh, the um, um, with the mechanisms, I would say the skeletal can uh, can be better to practice just because they'll be faster to uh, mm -hmm. to draw. And at the end, it, your focus is on the on the functional group anyway. So in this case, the double bond. So important to write down everything. Okay, now you can do the analysis. The first thing is work out the react the electrophile and the nucleophile. So what do we know? Well, hydrogen and bromine bonded together could be polar bond, but also we know that carbon double bond, it's a region of high electron density, which means that this, the double bond, will react as a nucleophile. Okay. HBr, what do we know? Well, one thing is that it's a polar bond, so we know that hydrogen will take that uh, positive dipole and bromine negative dipole. But also one thing to know is that whenever one molecule like this uh, approaches a region of electron density, uh, it gets polarized. Yeah, think about how the um, induced dipolarizes in the same, yeah, it's the same concept. Okay. So when this molecule approaches the nucleophile, because this is a set, this is a region of electron density, uh, the dipole forming the molecule. That's why this is also able to react with, uh, for example, just an allergen. Because here it's non-polar, of course, because it's the same element, no difference in electronegativity. But as it approaches this region of electron density, it becomes polarized. Okay, so dipoles, that's the first step. Like that we can identify the nucleophile and the electrophile because always remember, nucleophile react with an electrophile. So the hydrogen would be our electrophile. So let's write it down, electrophile. And now we can think about the curly arrows, okay? The first, as I said, nucleophile, electrophile, the first thing. And then like this, we always know how to start the mechanism because the curly arrows will always start from the nucleophile. So you, only, you really have to think about where do these electrons come from? Because as we said, this curly arrow is a movement of um, a pair of electrons. So where, does, where do they start? Well, the electrons that will move are the electrons that are in this pi bond of the uh, of the double bond. So those will move onto the hydrogen. Then we need to think, okay, so hydrogen can't really have two bonds, which means that so another bond will break. So often when you have one bond that is made, another one is likely to break. In this case, the HBr will break because hydrogen can't have more than two bonds. So if one new it's formed with the carbon, the other one will be broken with the bromine, okay? So let's think about the consequence of this curly arrow. So let I would suggest you to first write down everything that you know that it's present in the initial molecule. So in this case, we have carbon with the two hydrogens. And then what has changed? Well, there is one new bond. So I really want you to picture those are two electrons that are now in between the carbon and the hydrogen. In this case, it doesn't matter where because, uh, because we have equivalent, like we have a very symmetrical alkene, so it doesn't matter. But uh, uh, we have a new bond between the carbon and the hydrogen, okay? But think about that. Imagine this carbon has, uh, you know, these uh, dots and crosses. Let's say this carbon has the dots, the hydrogen, the crosses, anyway. 
carbon now, so this carbon has only three electrons left because one of the, its electrons, which were here, is now here. The dot, it's between the carbon and the hydrogen. So this leaves behind a carbocation intermediate. Okay, we can't forget this intermediate, but I think we can always course memorize the mechanism, but if you really understand the movement of electrons, then we can always work out what's left positive and what's left negative. In fact, the bromine, it would be over here on the side, negative, because the electrons that before it was sharing with the hydrogen, it's onto the, the bromine now, so it has a negative charge. And second step, well, we know that those are intermediates because they're formed after this first step. They are charged, they're not stable. We want to get the final product. Always keep an eye on what's the final product. So you know at the end what, what could happen. And you can just work it out with the curly arrows in the same way as before. What's the nucleophile and what's the electrophile in this case? Okay, so in this case, we have the bromine that it's negative and the carbon that is positive. So the curly arrow will end in this way. Okay, and this will give us our halo alkane. So the name of the mechanism though comes from the first step. We said it's an addition because we start with two reactants, we end up with one product only. Um, and in the first step, an electrophile is added. That's why this will take a name as electrophilic addition. Mm -hmm. Electrophilic addition, okay. Okay, so this is uh, the um, the, the simplest type of electrophilic addition. One thing to remember is that it's the mechanism will always be in like this, yeah, nucleophile to electrophile, and it's always going to, to be the same curly hour. So it doesn't matter what electrophile we have, in this, in this case, the electrophilic addition. But of course, there is a bit more complex uh, case, and that's when we, we don't have um, asymmetrical alkene. So let's have a look now at uh, this exception.